Oh my God, they're going insane. The prices are up, they're down, they're here, they're there, they're over there, they're over there. It's crazy. The prices on these mystery booster cards are just all over the map. Uh, one second they're crazy high, next second they're crazy low. Uh, the market's trying to figure out what to do with these and it doesn't know. Uh, so I figured out the uh, one of the big problems is actually the foils because the mystery booster set has been out for a little while with the convention set. But the foils, obviously, are brand new to the retail version. And the foils, you know, because some of these cards weren't printed in foil before, and some of these cards, the foils were so hard to get in the original sets before they increased the foil pull rate that the prices are all over the place with it. So and nobody really even has a foil price list yet uh, that I could find. So, you know, the value that you're seeing on your boxes is probably with the foil multipliers from the original sets, which makes it look like you got $400 worth of cards, like I thought on my last box that I opened. But it turns out a, a lot of that's the foil multiplier, so it's probably more like two, 250 range, which is still amazing value for a box that was intended to be a hundred bucks. Um, when they first came out, they were about a hundred, 110. And then as soon as people started opening them and realized how cool they were and how much good stuff's in here, they jumped up immediately to the uh, 150, 160 range now. Uh, I originally got a case because I wanted to do like I did with uh, Theros and, and get a case and open it all on the channel. And then uh, when the prices calm back down, buy a bunch more to sit on and invest in. However, this looks like there's only going to be two print runs. The one print run is pretty much already gone. And then there's going to be another print run here soon, I believe. And I'm really hoping that, that the other print run, the prices come down a little bit because I'd like to pick up more. I was, like I said, I was really going to open all six. Then I decided because the prices jumped up so much that I was like, I don't know if I'll be able to afford anymore. I don't want to put 150, 160 a box into it uh, when it's supposed to be a hundred dollar box because we know how that happens. It's going to come back down eventually, uh, or it may not. We know it all. This could be—it's a mystery. Um, <laughs> they may not come back down. I don't know. That's why I'm hesitant to open anymore. But I'm going to open one more because I haven't got a mana crypt yet, and I'm very disappointed by that. So I'm hoping this one's the one with the mana crypt in it. It's kind of. Kind of rough on the foil or on the, the wrapper on the outside here. Anyway, let's break into this. I know these are a little bit longer videos because I like to show every single card because there's a ton of value in the common and uncommon slot in this set. So we don't really want to skip over anything. I'm sure everybody wants to see all the goodness, not just some of it. Not just the, the rare and mythic goodness. So let's take a look. Let's see what we get in here. Uh, I, I really enjoy in this set. I think it's awesome for draft. And uh, there's, there is still a lot of value in here. The value will probably stabilize and, and go back up. Right now, it's looking like the, these are less than half of the value of the originals. I'm not sure if we got another Chronicles on our hand or not. We'll have to see. Time will tell. All right. Uh, Gus Walker, Reviving Dose, Trinket Mage, Vapor Snag. Uh, I'm probably not going to name them all this time because I want to make this a little bit faster. I'll just kind of stop up and get any good ones like Experiment 1 here. And then we got our... Warden of the Eye is our... Why am I going backwards? I, have I been doing all these backwards with my piles? Anyway, Warden of the Eye is our uh, our multicolor. Palladium Mire is our artifact. Order Shards, nice and common. Very valuable and common is our uh, uh, whatever slot. Angel of the Dire Hour. Good card here. There's our rare. And then it's a Fairy's Puzzle Box. So nice pack right off the bat. Uh, the Puzzle Box, I don't know. It depends on who you talk to. Uh... Some people it's like five bucks, some people like 50. I don't know, you know, I just don't know. <laughs> so, like I said, the foil prices are just, they're trying to find a home and they haven't found a home yet. Uh, we'll just kind of go through, like I said, I'll show them all, but I'm not gonna name them all like I did in the last couple videos just because uh, that was a little little too much, a little too long. Uh, Agony Warp is our multicolor. Meteorite's our artifact. Dungrove Elder is our first rare. Solemn Simulacrum is our actual rare slot. And a foil Mirrodin's Core. And for the foil in that pack. 
All right, so how have you guys been uh, doing with this set? Have you been pulling some good pulls? Are you having fun? Have you been able to draft it yet? Uh, I'm really, I wish they had actually done a little bit bigger print run on the first run because the stores were sold out of it literally the night that we that we got it, the night that it uh, released. Store was already sold out of it. By the time I got there, like seven o'clock, uh, they were already gone. Gary. Uh, so I was pretty disappointed by that because I plan on picking up a couple more boxes on release night at the uh, at my Friday Night Magic at my local game store and wasn't able to. River Hoopo, Evolving Lounge, uh, River Boa, Torment of Hellfire, nice. I don't know, what's happening with my piles tonight? Then a Celestial Cairn for our foil rare. Uh, Torment of Hellfire is a good card. I, I've just, I've got all kinds of stacks happening here. Let me... What's going on here? Oh, boy. I'm failing miserably here tonight. What is going on? It is, like, pretty late, and I had a pretty long weekend, so... <laughs> well, it's not long weekend, a very short weekend, but it was, uh... Yeah. A lot happened this weekend, so I'm pretty, pretty exhausted here. I'm dying to get, just go to bed, but I have to get a video up here. <laughs> so, anyway. Okay. Now that I've wasted a bunch of time sorting out piles, let's get back to work here. <laughs> so yeah, let me know uh, what's your favorite card in the set or what cards do you think they shouldn't have included, what cards do you think they should have included that they didn't. You know, let's start a conversation about it. All right, I'm trying to trying to get more organization here. Great return. Curse of the Nightly Hunt. Wooly likes it on. Yeah, let me know what you think is going to happen with the prices. Right now, they're just insanity. Why is everything sliding? These cards, I've noticed, are extremely slippery. Uh, Draconic Disciple. Our landslide is Crumbling Necropolis. And Cairn Wanderer is our rare. Desolation Twins, our second rare. And Sundial of the Infinite is our rare foil. So we're getting a lot of rare foils in this box, which is nice. The first box I opened, I got pretty much just common and uncommon foils. And then the second box I opened, I got mostly rares. So hopefully this is going to be another rare foil box. It's kind of kind of weird. A lot of people are saying the same thing. They're very hit or miss on the foils. Uh, so, I'm not sure what to think about that. We'll have to see how that unfolds. But it, it all it seems like the boxes are, you know, w with it being so volatile on the foils, I'm kind of surprised it's not more volatile on the rares and stuff. I think uh, overall they kind of did a pretty decent job of it. Russian Meander. I saw the... I saw the hybrid red, red green, thought it was our uh, Manomorphous or whatever it is. But I think that's, uh, isn't that in the common slot? I think that's in the common slot. Found a renewal. Oh, our first mythic, the angelic destiny. And then a nice Krenko mob boss. He's good. And then a sheltering ancient from Cold Snap is our foil. All right. Keep digging here. So have you pulled a Mana Crypt yet? That is definitely by far the most expensive card in the set. Uh, I have one of the original ones that I read the book for when they first came out. So I'm not completely heartbroken that I haven't got one, but I would really like to get another one. I want one of the modern ones too. Guy's Blessing is good. Ancient Stirring is good. Coiling Oracles are multicolor. Mind Stone is our artifact. That's a good one. Bloom Tender, there we go. There's some good value on the board. And then, uh, looks like Philander Silverin is our regular rare. <laughs> and then a Stormcrow. So, let me know in the comments. I wasn't around, so I guess this is kind of a meme card now because of something, uh, some event that happened. I don't know why it's not focusing. There we go. So, let me know what happened with the Stormcrow, why the Stormcrow is like this big joke now. I have no idea. <laughs> uh, when I was playing before, it was just a kind of cool two-drop, one-two flyer. But it was nothing special. I have no idea where the where the meme or the hilarity comes from. But let me know in the comments what happened. I assume somebody tried to do something stupid with one. I don't know. Let me know. I wasn't I wasn't around. I was doing other things. <laughs> so kind of curious. Keep hearing people talk about it. Oh, I love that. Uh, I love the friction, man. I wish they wouldn't have stopped doing that. Uh, our Slave of Bolas is our uh, multicolor. Uh, useless vehicle for our artifact. Goblin game. <laughs> Look at that little guy. 
Because he ain't buying his bag. Don't trust him. All right, that's our, our old school rare. We got Commit to Memory. And then Ricky, the, his, the History of Kamigawa. Whenever you play a legendary spell, draw a card. That could come in a little more handy nowadays. There's a lot of legendary stuff in the new sets. So, yeah, so let me know what, what the deal is with the Stormcrow. Why it's so funny. Because <laughs> I'm missing the joke. Everybody keeps cracking jokes about it, and I'm missing it. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm just not sure. Thought cast, good card. Uh, you gotta kind of build the deck around it, though, so that's the one downside of that one. Price of progress. Let's see. We're not getting a lot of the crazy uh, commons or uncommons in this box so far. A short sword, thieving magpie, he's funny. A goblin char belchers are rare. And then rune tail kitsune ascendant is our flip card, another fall rare. All right. We are getting a lot of rare foils. That's a good thing. And a storm curl. <laughs> Ironically, on the price list for the foils that I could find, it looked like the storm curl was like selling for a buck fifty. Is that just because it's a joke, or I don't know? Well, you'll have to let me know. I have no idea. Tavern swindler. Little hammer. Wolfkin bond. Beast within. Oh, oh! I'm just throwing everything everywhere. I really need sleep. <laughs> Oh man, as soon as the video is over, I gotta upload one and then I'm going to bed. Campaign of Vengeance is our multicolor. New Benalia is our land. Recoup. And then Adorned Pouncer. And then a Panglacial Worm Foil from Cold Snap again. So, uh, getting some decent foils and a couple decent cards, but it's been a fairly slow box so far. We're nearing the halfway point and. Not a whole lot of craziness has happened yet, or at least I'm just not awake enough to, to notice it, if it has. Uh, so, yeah. Like I said, let me know in the comments uh, what you think of the set, and what do you think the prices are going to do. Do you think they're going to level out down or level out up? Reclusive Artificer, Blinding Soul Eater, Flame Shot, old school uh, prophecy card, Mind Spring, is a rare, and then Helix Pinnacle, another fall rare. Yeah. I have a feeling it's not going to be as bad as Chronicles, I'm hoping, because it's not white border for one, but <laughs> uh, I think that, uh, I think because they use the same art in the original border and all that, the only difference is just the Planeswalker logo, I have a feeling that uh, the prices won't be hit as bad on this set i don't think they're going to be half like right now they're about half of what the originals are i don't think they're going to stay that low i think they'll come up a little bit uh breeze dancer benthalic infiltrator lashkin barrier or lash knife barrier from a plane shift old card mystic confluence is our rare and then a boundless realms another rare foil three green rare foils and three packs in a row that's kind of weird <laughs> Would have been four if the, uh, we hadn't gotten the rune tail in the middle. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, personally, I think the price will come back up a little on the on the regular cards. Not, I'm not sure what the falls are going to do. That's going to be, need to be seen because, uh, like I said, the, the originals, the falls were so hard to get. But these, obviously, if you come across the card in the back, it's a foil. So, <laughs> there's not really a whole lot of a... Uh, you know, risk as far as not getting the foils in this set either. <laughs> if it's in the set, it's foil. If it's uh, one of the foils, you know, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Mardu Rough Rider, Dismal Backwater, uh, Greater Gargadon, Borrow's Reckoner is a rare, and then we got a, a split card, uh, Uncommon Foil, Wear and Tear. So we're about halfway through the box, and uh, aside from the Bloom Tender, nothing really super spicy unless I'm just too tired to notice. And I missed something, which is very possible. Healer's Hawk, he's fun. He's being, he's still being played a ton right now uh, because of all the life gain decks. Yeah, anything with life link and flying is being utilized quite a bit. Rolling Thunder. Yeah, we're just not getting a lot of the good commons and uncommons unless I'm missing them. Balith Null, Prophetic Prism. We're getting a lot of commons and uncommons in that, that, uh, those slots too. Yamavaya's Embrace and Misdirection, and then a Stigma Lasher is our rare foil again. We're definitely getting a lot of rare foils in this box. 
So apparently it seems like you're either going to get a lot of commons and uncommons or very few rares, or you're going to get a lot of rares and very few commons and uncommons. Uh, but the mythics tend to be uh, difficult to get in all of them by the looks of it. <laughs> I don't see too many of the mythic foils. I think they definitely nerfed those down quite a bit. Let me know if you've seen anything different. Oh, there's an Essence Warden. Finally, a decent common. Uh, I think that's like buck fifty-two bucks, something like that, right now. Drana's emissaries are multicolor. Filigree familiars are artifact. Rith the Awakener. That's our, our old school kind of rare. Debtor's Nail, another good rare, and then Form of the Dragon rare foil. So another rare foil and a couple decent rares in that pack. Finally. We're getting there. We've only got one Mythic so far in the entire box, though. That's uh, quite surprising. I mean, there's a chance of getting two Mythics in a pack, and we've only got one Mythic in the whole box. So, that's kind of weird. Gosh. I do love the alternate uh, casting cost stuff. I absolutely love it. Uh, I just wish it wasn't pick up lands, because that's kind of, man. You know. That's why that one's not a $10 or $20 card. But if it was, like, pick up two permanents or, or discard two islands, then it would be a lot more. Crystal Charms, Bell Base Portal, a Vigor, and a one with nothing. Oh, uh, that's a funny card. One of the guys in my uh, Friday night draft, when we uh, drafted this set, he, he pulled that and put it in his deck just for the hell of it. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it had absolutely no use at all, he put it in there just just to say just to do it. I guess that's pretty funny. Uh, a lot of people were having a lot of fun with it. That's the coolest thing about this set is drafting with it is just fun. Not trying to like brutally win. Well, I mean some guys were, but most part, most of everybody was just trying to have fun. Corpse Jack Menace, a Simic Locket. There we go. Crufix. Finally, our second Mythic and a Chromatic Lantern. That's a good hit. And then a Spring Jap Shepherd Uncommon Foil. All right, now the last stack. We're getting down there. Let me know what you think so far. I know I'm not very uh, exciting tonight, probably, unfortunately. Pacifism, good card. Uh, just because I'm just exhausted, but yeah. I wanted to get a, a video up. You know, I'm trying to keep a video going every night. Uh even though it's getting very expensive. <laughs> I'm not making any money. Uh, Putrefy. Serrated Arrows. Juicy Apprentice. Another one of those flip cards. And that Grave Crawler. That's a good card. Oh, and the Sin Triplets. There we go. That's the first one I pulled. Uh, it feels like it's like twice as thick as the other cards. Very, very weird. It's a little bit offset, too. But this is one of the uh, more popular um, foils. I don't know if it's one of the... I think the 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 value has gone all over the place on this. I have no idea how much it's worth right now. Originally, it was like it was way up there when they when the set first came out, but in the, now it's like I'm seeing them for a few bucks. I, I just I have no idea. The prices are all over the place. All right. Speaking of prices all over the place, dismantling blue. Uh, have you seen the? Previews, brainstorm, great card. Yargle, eh, I think that's the first Yargle I've pulled. Maybe second. Uh, the the fetch lands, holy moly. The fletch man, fletch, <laughs> yeah, I can't talk tonight. Uh, the fetch land, secret lair coming out is going to be starting at, I think they said $165, but a lot of the LGSs will probably charge more for it. Boros Challenger, Universal Solvent, Hack and Strong Gold Scores are rare from Cold Snap, and the Eldritch Evolution. I had fun with that in my draft deck. Uh, that's from uh, Shadows of Shadows of Innistrad, I believe. Is that what that is? I don't know. A regular Innistrad? Original Innistrad? Uh, e M N. Eldritch Moon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not too familiar with those sets. And then uh, Ogre Gate Crashers or Foil. <laughs> yeah, so the they're doing the fetch lands, the enemy fetch lands, I guess. I think they were the ones in Fate Reforge, if I'm correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. And yeah, they're the rest. There you go. Good one. Uh, they're talking about 165, but they're only going to give a few to each uh, local game store, each WPN store. 
So I'm not sure what their strategy is with that, but it's obvious that Azorius Charm, good card. Tectonic Edge is our land. Sadistic Hypnotist from Odyssey. And Approach the Second Sun from Amonkhet. And then a Noggle Bandit Common Foil. <laughs> Funny artwork on that one. So yeah, it's obvious that Wizards is paying very close attention to the secondhand market. Secondary market. Secondhand. Secondary market. Yeah, I'm awake. And uh, they are 100% trying to cash in on it at our expense, of course. Uh, they're just greed mongering it up with this one. I mean, it's so blatantly obvious that they're just trying to be greedy into the fins. Uh, cause I mean, I mean, the last one was 50 bucks and now this one's going to be, Oh, eternal witness. Finally a decent uncommon in here. Uh, yeah, it's the last one was 50 bucks. And now this one can be like close to 200. If you're lucky, if you can get one, fusion elemental. Ashburns, Assemble the Legion, Alicia Who Smiles at Death, and then a Knowledge Pool for a Foil Rare. So yeah, we're not getting a lot of hits in this box. Been pretty disappointing so far. Gotta say, I'm regretting opening this one now, of course. So, yeah, I mean, they're they're really just, they're trying to sell cards. Finally, Diabolic, or Demonic Tutor, nice. Great card. I love that card. One of my favorite cards ever. I wish it wasn't banned or restricted and everything. Um, yeah, I just... I think it's cheesy. I think they should stay away from the, the secondary market and just let it be what it is. That's what makes the game great, I think. One of the big things is the secondary market. Shrewd Hashling. Armillary... Armillary... Armillary Spear? Yeah. Hurricane? Wow. That's kind of a waste of a reprint. Dalrin Sky Summoner and Proclamation of Rebirth. I pulled that in the in the uh, draft. I got one of those, and literally that night, everybody was like, "Oh, it's like a fifteen dollar card," and now tonight it's worth like a couple bucks. I don't know. We'll see what happens. These prices are all over the place. But yeah, I'm not really happy with the the price on the uh, Fetch Land Secret Lair. I'm not digging really what they're doing with the secret lair i do like the fact that they're doing it to just the wpn's uh stores Belfort strix good gun coming sandstone oracle null spine dragon oh and liliana death's majesty finally a good hit and a mythic we we're only up to three mythics and we're only down to, we're down to two packs sakura scribes tribe scout yes i can't talk at all tonight Sakura Tribe Scout is an amazing common and worth a lot of money. Well, not a lot of money, but I mean, for a common, it's worth a lot. So, <laughs> uh, we'll see. Although, that price could change and by the time I'm done actually recording this video because, you know, prices are going up and down every two seconds now. But yeah, let me know what you think about the, the Secret Lair Fetch Land thing, but I think it's a total scam. I think they're just really just, uh, it's almost insulting that they're doing that. For that kind of price range i mean i almost think it would have been less insulting if they'd have done five drops <laughs> and included a couple extra cars with them or you know something like that or clan rampager crows and verge crenellated wall and a coat of arms decent little rare and then a lich's mirror nice Let's just mirror a uh, mythic foil. Finally, a mythic foil. I was talking about, uh, I didn't got one, I don't think, in any of the boxes. And finally, we get one. So, last pack. Looks like a uh, mana crypt is evading me again. I don't know if there's, you know, pretty much guaranteed a mana crypt in each case or if I could possibly open the other three boxes and still not get a mana crypt. I don't know. Let me know if you uh, have any information on that. Counter spell, good common. Uh,. But, yeah, so far, three boxes, no mana crypt. Yep, my uh, my local game store owner opens one pack and gets a mana crypt. What is up with that? <laughs> Damn you! Obelisk Spider, Cathodian, Weathered Wayfarer, Decent Rare, Shamanic Revelation, and our foil is Mana Swept, or Mana Wept Silt Liver. So there you have it. Pretty uh, pretty weak box opening compared to the other ones I've done. 
with this set. I'm quite surprised. This is kind of what I was thinking was going to happen at the beginning. So I guess just uh, everybody opening the, the early boxes just had beginner's luck with this set or something. Because <laughs> this is kind of what I thought would happen is there'd be boxes like this where you just really don't get a lot of value. Even though we got a ton of rare foils, it's just, it doesn't seem, maybe I'm just tired, but it doesn't seem like we got a lot of good hits in this box, as opposed to, uh, you know, some of the boxes people are opening, they're just hit after hit after hit after Mana Crypt after hit after Mana Crypt. So, <laughs> I don't know, let me think what you guys, or let me know what you guys are thinking of this set. I'm going to go get some sleep after I upload this video because I am absolutely exhausted thanks for watching guys i really appreciate it there's probably a couple other video suggestions in the corners to check out hopefully you'll check out another video too while you're here um hopefully this one doesn't send you to the hills running screaming about how terrible i am so <laughs> hopefully we'll see you guys in the next one thanks a lot i really appreciate the views and the likes and the subscriptions and the comments and we'll see you in the next one thank you bye